Thank you for joining us today and welcome back to WAM's Webinar Wednesdays. Today I'm joined by Kathleen Vitek, WAM's Director of Training, and Alan Sargent, Sales Manager, and Dennis McCarthy, Sales Engineer from DocsCorp. Now for those unfamiliar or those of you just joining our series, I'll share a little bit about WAM's. We've been providing law firms and businesses with computer consulting and support services since 74. We continue our reputation for quality and service today by installing and proactively maintaining computer systems as well as providing technology solutions for hundreds of law firms and businesses. So today we're going to go ahead and cover track changes and redlining and then Kathleen will go over some tips on document comparison and track changes in Microsoft Word. Then we're going to hear a little bit more about DocsCorp from Alan, and then Dennis will go into a, a demo of the ComparedOcs product. And they're going to show you a few other products that might help you to manage your documents as well. Then we'll go ahead and go into a live Q&A with WAMS and DocsCorp. So um, during the presentation, please type all questions in the designated question chat box at any time, and we will address them during the Q&A. So let's go ahead and get started with track changes and redlining. I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Kathleen. Okay, good morning, everybody. I'm going to be bringing up Microsoft Word here and talking to you about the default features that are part of Microsoft Word when it comes to using track changes and document comparison. Just giving you a few tips and a little bit of overview, and then, of course, we'll be seeing a demonstration of a really great product for handling those needs if Microsoft Word is not working for you. So I've been working in the legal industry and training for many, many years and have been dealing with and helping users with track changes for years, and one of the things that probably some of you on this call are very aware of is that if your users aren't trained properly with how to use track changes, they can really create a problem by sending documents to people that contain information that you didn't want them to see. So training, of course, that's my spin, is really important. So, you know, that's what my perspective is, and so I want to give you a couple of tips that will help your users if you're going to continue to use Microsoft Word's track changes and compare. So I'm going to open a document and just turn on track changes just to give you a little demonstration here, and I'm going to go to the review tab. The review tab is where track changes lives. And I'm simply going to turn on the track changes feature by clicking the button here. And as I begin making changes to the document, adding text here, and now we'll hit the delete key and I'm deleting text. Now, one of the things you might be seeing on my screen, I, I happen to be using Word 2016, is that there's a red line on the left-hand side where I added text. The text is being added just with an underline and the deleted text is not showing up with a strike through. So one of the new and maybe not so great features that Microsoft introduced with track changes is a new view, which is the default when you install the newer versions of Microsoft Word called simple markup. So simple markup doesn't show you what you actually want to see most likely in a document. So what you will need to do and have your users do is go to the review tab where it says simple markup here, hit the drop down and choose all markup. Now this is the traditional view that we're probably accustomed to seeing and this is what most users want as a default. The problem is, is that if you make the change to all markup, it's only making that change in your view of the current document. And so I've heard a lot of frustration from users that every single time they open a track changes document, they have to go and change their default from simple markup to all markup. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a tip on how you can fix that problem and make it be a default. Something not very obvious, but what I'm going to do is exit this Word document, and I'm going to launch Word from my taskbar, and I'm going to turn the track changes feature on, switch it to all markup, and then exit Microsoft Word. 
And believe it or not, by simply making that change, exiting Microsoft Word while not being in an existing saved document, that teaches Microsoft Word. So we'll make this switch it to all markup. Now when I exit Word and I open a document from this point forward, that should be my default. I don't even know how I know that. I don't know where one would find that little tip or that bit of information. But for some reason with Microsoft Word, if you make a change from launching Word from the taskbar without an existing document, it tends to hold its options more often. So a couple other tips that will also possibly help when, when working with track changes is that you can actually add the ability to turn track changes on and off from the bottom left of your screen here, this area where I'm kind of hovering with the mouse is called the status bar. So if I right click on that status bar, I'll see that track changes is an option and I can add that to my status bar, which means that I can turn track changes on and off from here. And also it will display for me whether track changes is on and, and, and active when I even open a document. If there's any of you on here who've ever had any training from me before, you know that one of the things I like to do is give a bonus tip, even if it's not about track changes, when I see something that I think would be useful. So I want to point out to you that the status bar down here also allows you to see the formatted page number. So if you're scrolling through a document and you have exhibit sections and the exhibit pages are numbered differently, as you scroll through a document, when the formatted page number is displayed, it will show here on the status bar. Also, the section number as well. So you may want to customize that status bar, turning on your formatted page number, your section number, and definitely the track changes. Okay, just a couple other little tips here that I want to, uh, to share with you. I'm going to go back over to the review tab. And one of the things that comes up a lot is wanting to have a specific name shown as the person making the changes to the document. And those, that name is coming from your computer settings. In the newer version of Word, they've made it easier for you to check and set the name that you want displayed as the person who's making the changes. So if you go to the Review tab, and you just click the little Quick Launcher icon here, it brings up a dialog box, and there's a button right here that says Change Username. So you can go and look to see what name is set on your computer to display as the reviewer name. So my computer is set as training. However, there is an issue here where my name may not display even though it's shown here because the checkbox that says always use these values regardless of sign in to office. So what that means is if that's not checked, if your sign in to office is uh, different, you won't get the display name that you wish. So what you want to do is put your username here the way you want it to display as the reviewer name of your track change document. And then you also want to check this box as well. And then one final note about names. And that is that lately I've been getting a lot of requests and issues from people who are dealing with emailing documents and somehow unbeknownst to them, the name of the reviewer is being stripped from the document. And it turns out that buried deep in Microsoft Word's Trust Center settings, which is under File and Options, there is a little known feature that can get turned on and it will strip the name from the, uh, the document as the reviewer. So I just wanted to let you know that if you're having any issues or would like further training on track changes and comparing documents, you can email info at whamsinc.com and Ashley can get you in touch with me and I can provide more information on that. Now, as the final thing that I'm going to demonstrate to you, I'm going to actually use Microsoft Word's Compare, which in essence is going to be track changes. But you're going to start with two clean documents. So if you have maybe a document that was provided to you from an opposing counsel, and you want to make sure that you can see if there was anything changed or different from that document to your original, you can take two documents and it will compare them and it will provide for you the results as if you had tracked the changes of the document all along. So we're going to start in Microsoft Word under the Review tab 
and we're going to click compare. I happen to have iManage installed on my laptop, so if you have iManage, you could compare here. But I'm gonna just click compare and compare again, and it's going to allow me to select two documents. So I'm gonna go ahead and just pick these two files from my de desktop. And this is my original, and this is going to be my revised document. And I'm going to go ahead and click the OK. So what it's providing for me is the comparison of the two documents. The original document is here. The revised document is here. You don't have to see those. You can actually close those panels. And then over on the left, a list of revisions. And I'm going to scroll through this document a little bit. And I want to point out to you something, because later on, when we get a demonstration of the compare docs, you're going to see that the comparison of tables in particular, which has always been a problem when using Microsoft Word, is going to look a lot cleaner. To me, this looks very messy. I'm not quite sure why it's uh, marking off uh, deletions here. If we scroll a little further down in this document, we're going to see that there was some mistakes that the compare feature made in the document when it comes to uh, showing moved. And you'll see when the demonstration is given that the moved document is uh, text. Well, it's actually moved text, but um, in this document, it was showing it as additions and deletions. So this has always been an ongoing issue with Microsoft Word's Compare in that it's not accurate. And again, it'll be described a little bit more clearly as, as to why the Compare Docs feature will give you a more accurate comparison. And the final thing that I want to mention to you when it comes to comparison and track changes, just another little tip is that as much as everybody desperately wants to control the colors of the track changes and the comparison, you, you cannot do that. If you go and mess around with the colors, what you'll do is you'll set the color for the document and you'll override Microsoft Word's ability to choose a color by reviewer. So if anybody asks you to set a specific color, just make sure you let them know that if they do so, they will not be able, Microsoft will not be able to select a color by reviewer. So that's going to conclude my tips today on track changes and on document comparison. And what I'm going to do now is turn the screen over to Alan from DocsCorp, who's going to give you a little bit of an overview of the company, and then you'll get to see a, a demo. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everybody, and thank you for your attendance. Uh, I truly appreciate the opportunity to introduce you to DocsCorp, for those that do not know us, and for those clients, for those that have met with us before, uh, a chance to re-review our Compare Docs product. I'm assuming everybody can see my screen at this point nice and clear. Uh, my goal today is to simply do a general introduction of DocsCorp, and then at that point, we will do a presentation of the product in operation. Uh, for those that are not familiar with DocsCorp, we're a global company uh, headquartered out of Sydney, Australia, uh, with offices in Europe and here in the United States in Pittsburgh as being our uh, the U.S. operations office, but we have offices scattered throughout uh, the U.S., uh, Portland, I'm in Arizona, and my associate dentist on the phone is in North Carolina. Today, we have over 4,000 customers, around a half million seats of folks using our products worldwide. Uh, we do provide global support at 24 by five, actually because you're in California, 24 by six, uh, that you can reach out and access if you need any assistance. And our product is quickly becoming the number one software of choice in the area of do uh, desktop document support. And absolutely excellent firm, wonderful support, and we focus all our energy on four products. I'm trying to get the slide to switch over, correct? Oh, sorry, folks. What's going on with my thing? Oh, there we go. Sorry. A uh, little bit of PowerPoint problem. So we have four products. One is to edit and create PDF documents. I'm sure that many of you out there today are working with this type of document. 
and we provide an alternative to Adobe or Nuance or others uh, that provides editing capabilities, bundling capabilities, building binders, and all the other features you need for productivity with this document type. We also provide for outbound email security control, including recipients, uh, monitoring who your recipients are for outbound email, scrubbing of metadata. Today, we're gonna look at our Comparedox product, which is the ultimate uh, in comparing for documents, and we'll look at that in detail. And then we do background OCR and document compression on your document store. Those are our four primary products and have been very well accepted throughout the industry. Here's a list of some of our clients. Uh, as I mentioned, we're approaching the 5,000 mark of uh, uh, named clients, a uh, half million seats, uh, many from the Southern California area. Here's a few of our uh, local legal firms utilizing. Uh, we do, of course, have firms in the AM Law 100, but we also have firms that are sole practitioners. So we covered the gamut, and I'm sure that we scale correctly for your size of organization. At this point, I would like to just note at the end of the presentation, I'm having PowerPoint problems here. Okay, I think I finally got the correct slide up. Sorry, folks. Uh, at the end of the presentation, if you're interested, visit our website, www.docscorp.com, and you'll notice there is a free trial button there. Click on that, and you can take and have a no cost, no obligation opportunity to work with the products in your own environment. Uh, will assist you and provide support so you can try out Compare Docs uh, in, on your desktop and see if it's good for your firm. So I just want to make sure that you highlight that. And uh, at this point, the best thing is to take a look at the product. And I'd like to introduce Dennis McCarthy. He is a senior software engineer uh, with Docs Corp. He's got many years experience in working with law firms in the area of document management. And he's going to take us through the Compare Docs product and show you some of the many of the robust features that it offers for you. So without a doubt, uh, Dennis, I'm handing you the microphone. All right, thank you for that, Alan. Um, just a quick check, did everybody see my desktop? Hello? Yes, you are good. Alan? <laughs> okay, great. Okay, so as uh, uh, Kathleen pointed out, you know, Word does come with embedded comparison functions, and if and if you're primarily doing just word-to-word -word comparison, I'd say on on the you know for the most part, it works well. It does have some deficiencies. Um, I'm not going, you know, this isn't a beat up Word section, so there are a lot of things that it just doesn't do. It's just not made to do, and those are things like comparing. Word to PDF, comparing other file types, PDF to PDF, Excel documents, PowerPoint documents. But I think, uh, you know, in direct integrations into leading uh, document management systems, whether that's iManage, NetDocuments, WorldDocs, and others um, that come out of the box. So it really works the way that you do. I'm going to start this demonstration off by just launching the interface. You do not have to launch the interface uh, directly. You can launch it by uh, just your workflows and how you work through um, your comparisons. It's pretty straightforward. You have an original document section, a modified section. We do offer support for comparing one to many. So if you send a document out for review to Ben and Julie and Paula and you get those revisions back, we could just hit our plus button and drag and drop those change documents here and we can generate red lines or track change documents against that main source document as an example. We have different output types, right? So from a word perspective, you're only gonna get a word output. Um, and we have a couple of report types within each of these. So with Word, you can create a static marked up red line report, but you can also have a marked up report with track changes for you to just do inline and move along in your editing process. You don't have to open up, you know, some of the competition on the market has to open up an, its own proprietary viewer, albeit it looks nice, but it's done by design because what's happening behind the scenes 
is that there's a conversion that has to happen in order to do the comparison. And I really want to stress this because it comes into two key um, operations of a comparison. First and foremost is accuracy. And second, and I'd say like 1.1 is speed. We do not even have to have the office program loaded on a machine to do comparisons of Word or PDF for that matter, because we're doing it at the binary level of the files themselves, which is why we get such accurate comparison, number one, and uh, fast comparison, number two. Next is we have by default out the ability to output the PDF um, with side-by-side -side comparisons, which really come into play um, when you're dealing with things like Excel spreadsheets or PowerPoint files. You know, uh, Excel and PowerPoint do have some comparison capabilities that um, may or may not be fitting your needs, and I'll show you what these output types look like uh, when we get there. You can also take PDFs compare PDFs and output them to Word with track changes, which is becoming increasingly popular. And again, I'll be showing this all to you. You have the ability to put on a summary report to a red line to show, you know, kind of those high level statistics of the exact amount of changes and how they were rendered. And I think Kathleen mentioned that uh, Word has a default rendering set of how things are displayed, whether it's red or blue, um, et cetera, on things on how they are marked up, you have the full ability and the, the ability to edit the way things are marked up. So if you wanted things to look differently, if you didn't want it to be double underlined, if you wanted it to be red, green, you can change those um, on a per user or a group basis for that matter. We have a detailed report, which essentially would be a report of every change that happened within the document. And you can append that as a as a report, and then ultimately a changes only report. I won't go into it right now. I want you to see it in action. Because this really is something that is uh, groundbreaking and saves a lot of folks time. So let's start with some simple workflows. So you do, you know, I just want to be very clear. You do not have to have a document management system in place to use the software. So I'm just going to start uh, just here on my desktop and I'm going to open up two, two documents for us to work on. This is primarily where you're going to be working with the documents. And as you saw within Word, you had to have Word open to a blank document and then start to bring in your documents from that. But we take it one step further. So with our product installed, you will get a right-click menu option in Windows Explorer or any of the document management systems that you have installed. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and I can right-click and compare at this point. But really what I want to do is open these documents because this is really the primary workflow. I come in the office in the morning, I open up document one, I dupe and revise it to version two and make my changes. And now I want to see the differences between those two. So now this is, ver I happen to be on version two. We have a DocsCorp ribbon. And as we said, we have a number of different tools, but I want to concentrate on compare docs today. And I'm going to click on launch into compare docs. I don't have to go and search for that file. I have the file and it loads that letter in here for us. I, all I need to do is navigate to that other file, which is our, oh, I select the wrong one. To, this is our source document. So this is our original. I go to that DocsCorp ribbon, launch into compare docs. It knows that there's an active window open and will bring it into there for us automatically. Just gonna minimize these down so we could see this on the screen. So I want to talk through this a little bit more. First, you see that since the first document I brought in was the modified, it came into the original section. I don't have to stop and redo it. We have a hot toggle button right here for us to be able to flip these documents around. So if I click on them, now I have my original and here is my modified. I then have my options here. I want to output to Word and I want to output my first output. I want to be a red line. And I'll stop for a moment and talk a little bit about the difference between a red line and a track changes output. A red line is real is a static, if you will, and it's just going to mark the document up with the changes that have been discovered in that document with the appropriate um, characteristics, whether that's strike throughs, underlines, green for moves, et cetera. And we can also append a summary report. 
All I need to do at this point is click on my compare icon. I have a number of options. I can open it up and it's just gonna open up and render into a Word document for me. I have an integrated workflow, which we'll get into in a minute. I could save it locally, save it back into a DMS, or just go ahead and print it off. Believe it or not, a lot of folks are still printing these days. I'm just gonna go ahead and invoke, save it as a new document. It's just gonna pop up for us very quickly and easily. So before I was even done with a sentence, we're done. And that is because we are, again, at the binary level. We don't have to open up Word in the background convert it to an RTF, compare those RTFs, then put it into a proprietary viewer, and then we can work on it. That is um, how other competitors do it. And even Word needs to have Word open in order to compare it. So this is our simple um, red line marked up. And we can see now, as you saw in Kathleen's, the moves we're not showing as moves. So green is moves, blue is insertions, et cetera and we can move across the document. The other thing I wanna point out is that table. So we are using, we worked beforehand, we're using the exact same document. So this is that red lined output, and you can see very clearly that these were deleted in the table, and only excellent was deleted from this particular cell. Very easy to read, easy to understand. And if red line is what you want, this is exactly what you would use. I wanna move directly into the next um, output type, which is with track changes, right? You, you may not, you probably don't wanna have a summary report, so you're taking this version one and version two, you wanna take a look at them and start working on potentially version three, we wanna put that into a live track changes document that we can continue our editing chain on. So we don't have to have all those interim steps in order to make that happen. Again, I'm gonna click on view and it's gonna open up this Word document for us, then we could save it across. So now here we are, we have our revisions and we are in a live document. So I can go ahead and uh, delete this section. If I hit a carriage return here, you can see our numbering is, is respected. Um, if you're working with Word or other competitive solutions that are doing that conversion to RTF, the first thing that's gone is any formatting and you have to reapply them and I'm sure that there's heads nodding on the phone to that effect. If I come down to the move section, if I right click, now this is a feature of Word, this is not a feature of DocsCorp, however, we are able to um, give it to you in a, in a way in which it works well, and that is this follow move feature. So if I click on follow move, it's gonna highlight that, that move, that area of text in which it was moved from and vice versa. So if I follow that move back, I go there. Really not impressive um, when you're looking at a document where the move was done on the same page, but if this was a 600 page contract and then and we move the clause from page 300 to 195, um, it starts to have a lot of value very quickly. When we accept that move, it's gonna delete from where it came from. So we see that that's now been deleted. As we start to grow and scroll down now, let's get to the table, right? And this is really where the time saving comes in. Tables are in documents all the time. I start to accept these deletions. We're gonna to start to see that the table is going to start to resize for us automatically. That's nice. When I get to the last one and I click accept, what you're gonna see happen is voila, it's gonna move out to the print area of the table in which it started from. And this is an active table. If I wanna go through and add in, you know, an insert, insert uh, a column to the left or to the right, I can go ahead and do that. It's a word table, as opposed to being something other than a word table. Uh, I'm sure you've worked with those types of documents. Next, and this is not insignificant at all, cross-references in linking. So I can see that I have cross references and linking here within this document. And if I hit my control key and click on 3.2, that is active. And now my cursor is blinking at 3.2. So we respect that and we will hold that. So I want to reject that deletion and I go back to 3.2 and I'm there. Eliminates all of that reformatting of, reformatting of this document. Then I can happily go ahead and save this back to wherever I want it to my local driver, my managed system. 
So that's really getting to the speed and the accuracy of the comparison um, when we're dealing with these pieces of content. And I, again, I invoked that from within Word itself, was able to launch it into ComparedOcs. I could do the same from the managed systems. I could do the same from my desktop. So let's go ahead and do that now from, from the desktop, um, where I could just simply right click. Uh, I select my two documents and I can right click and compare with ComparedOcs. It's going to launch compare docs and put them in the appropriate window. I can move them back and forth if I wish. Another nice method is just simply drag and drop over the icon and it will launch the application. So there's a variety of ways for you to be able to invoke the application. So that's one use case. Let's talk about another popular one. And that is um, with the ability to PDF these days, people love to do it. Sometimes they're forced to do it based on policy. Um, and all types of requirements that are going on these days in the marketplace. But I've sent this contract out as a Word document, and lo and behold, somebody made an edit and PDF'd it. What do I do now if I don't have this technology? I have to somehow convert it to Word, save it to Word, then run my Word comparison from Word. Um, a bunch of steps. But with Comparadox, it's pretty straightforward. Again, a couple of ways. Some people love to work from the ribbon. Some people love to right click. I happen to be a right click person, but you have this compare attachments. If I click that, it would launch it. Or if I just simply right click on the attachment, I have a compare attachments button for me there. Again, invoke the application, put it into my original column. And let's just say that this document was born in a um, system like iManager, NetDocs, WorldDocs, really doesn't matter you will have that right-click functionality available to you. I can right-click that and say compare with compare docs. It's smart enough to know, again, that we have a dialog box open, and it's going to put that right within the, um, the dialog box. Again, I want to switch my original and modified, and I want the output to be Word with track changes. But I have a PDF document. How does that happen? Well, let's take a look. I'm going to click compare and click as view as new document. And the system is automatically going to say, I see that you have a PDF attached. We've already determined the best way to do this, which is just a straight conversion to Word. But if you knew that there was a heavy, heavy image only, or there's a lot of images in here, you can check this box and it would do a full OCR if needed. But we've determined that there was a text layer, so we don't need to do those. That also just want to let you know that if you have a scanned PDF with no text layer, we can handle those on the fly as well. So I'm just going to click OK. It's going to say, OK, take the PDF, convert it to Word, take the Word document, and let's take a look at both of these and put it into a track change document for us to work with. So I've taken a PDF and I've taken a Word document. I can see these track changes. I can accept or reject them right in line. Um, everything's great. Um, everything from a numbering perspective is there. If I go ahead and hit a carriage return, our auto numbering is there for us. And again, you know, that's coming from a PDF to a Word document. This um, seems simple, but it's very, very robust and saves a ton of time. If you've dealt with this before, I'm sure you had to renumber, delete, you know, just the straight text because it's not, it's not formatted with any sort of uh, auto numbering at all. There's also a, another workflow for you to be able to uh, get these documents back out to your counterparties, uh, whether they're internal or external. Again, I'll, I'll start from my desktop. I'll take in these two documents here. I'll drag and drop them over the icon so we can get to our comparison. Okay. Again, I can switch it back and forth. This time, instead of just opening up a document, I want to have a red line. I want that red line to be PDF. And I want to email, I want to email that back out. I want to email out my PDF red line, and I want to email out my, my Word document, or often considered in the business, the clean, most recent version of the document. We can do that with a built-in set of action steps. So instead of new document, I'm going to click on email and copy to clipboard. It's going to do that same sort of actions, 
convert them to PDF because now we're, we're looking at PDFs and we have some options here for us to deal with. I want my comparison. This is going to be my, my compared PDF document and I want my clean document. I go ahead and I click OK. It's automatically going to create an email for us. With the, so many times we send out a red line document, especially if you're creating it from Word, and what is referred to as that clean document, and how many times folks edit the wrong version of the document. They edit the red line, and that becomes a real nightmare to then reincorporate back into the document. We can do that, just make it a PDF, pretty obvious. Let's, let's do our edits on this one. So that happens to be one workflow. Another workflow is that you're working on you're working on an email, you know, over a course of a couple of hours, or you know, as you're working on on things during the day. And I am putting in my text, et cetera, and I have this ready, and then I say, geez, I need to, I want, I want to put that red line and the clean document on here. Have no fear, clean docs is here. I know it's cheesy, but it sounds pretty good. Same rules apply, I want to do email and copy, but in this case, instead of email, I want to choose copy, and essentially what this is going to do for us is allow me to copy to the clipboard these documents. And I could do all the documents if I wanted to include the original, but more often than not, it's the red line in the most recent version. I say, I say okay, it's in my clipboard. I can right click and paste, or I can uh, control V, and now I have those documents, and I didn't have to do that and have it auto-generate that email and drag and drop the emails around. Hopefully you would find that particular function useful. Let's talk about just PDF to PDF now. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this. Again, I can select my documents, uh, right click. I'll do a right click and compare with ComparedOx. It's gonna open it up and now we're dealing with two PDFs. Um, more often than not, we want to take these PDFs. We could just want the the red line of the PDF and understand the change, but I'd say the majority of the time, or oftentimes, we want to have a word output with track changes. I can do that. So I take two PDFs, output them to Word, and then I have, again, the same OCR dialog box is going to come up and say, we've noticed that there's text layer here. No need to OCR, but if you think that you want to, you can go ahead and do that. And again, just that quick, lightning quick OCR. I mean, this is running on an image um, that's running um, in a data center in, uh, in the middle of the country. And so you can imagine it'd be even quicker on your desktops. So we have two Word documents that, I mean, excuse me, two PDFs that we've outputted to Word, and now we can work with these documents. And again, all of that, all of that um, numbering and formatting is available for us. So now we've covered some workflow with email, dealing with PDFs. Now I wanna move over to Excel and how we deal with Excel, because that's clearly something that um, Word can't do. Um, depending on your version of Excel, it, it may or may not have the ability to do some sort of light uh, comparison, but we take it one step further. Um, for really giving you the ability to deal with Excel documents um, in a different view, right? So now that I brought in an Excel document, we have a new ver we have a new radio button here for an output to be Excel. You may want to do. I'm going to get to both. What I find to be more often than not the 90th percentile, someone who wants to take a look at an Excel spreadsheet, they want to see the differences from a cell to cell compare uh, standpoint not so much worried about the underlying formula change, if any, but we do have that available and I'll get there in a moment. This particular report type, I wanna do side by side with marked up annotations. And you'll, and you'll notice that my rendering set changed to highlighting server. So what this is gonna do for us electronically is, a, is essentially we've printed out two two spreadsheets, my 2004, 2005 balance sheet, put them on a conference table, I have a ruler, and I'm going line by line and then highlighting the changes between the two. This is exactly what we're gonna do from 
uh, an electronic standpoint. So I click on compare. It's going to take those two, convert them to PDF instantly, and then render that output for us with an easy to read side by side format. And here is that resulting output. Here's my 2004, here's my 2005. If I hover over the, the individual changes, we could see that um, this has been changed to 38986 and vice versa. It's changed from 37872. Really nice way to look at Excel if that's what you need to do. However, if you do need to understand what's happening underneath the hood from Excel and you do need to look at, now this is more of your, your finance team, if you will, um, and they need to see that from an Excel point of view, we can do that as well. We could pass this to Excel and have it rendered in an Excel form, uh, format. And I highlight the cell changes and you can see that they're changing over here uh, and over here as I click through the different values that have changed and we can understand why they've changed. So we've handled now Word, Word to PDF, PDFs, Excel documents, output to PDF on Excel, output to Excel on PDF. Let's take a look at now PowerPoint, because this is becoming increasingly popular, especially if you um, are a sales organization dealing with PowerPoints or a law firm um, that has a merger and acquisition uh, group. They deal with what's called a lot of pitch books. And how does that work? You know, in a lot of legalese, is now starting to become more and more prevalent in the pitch books. So we can handle that the same way. Again, I'm just going to drag and drop this over my, my icon. Again, you could do this from your managed system. You could do it from a right click. You could do it while, while it's open. It's up to you. I want to do that same thing. I want to output to PDF with a side-by-side -side marked up with annotations with my highlighting rendering set. So I click on compare, and we're going to see a similar output as we did with Excel, but now this is going to be a PowerPoint uh, set of slides that we're going to scroll through. So we're taking those PowerPoints, convert, converting them to PDF behind the scenes, and as soon as it's done with that, we're going to do that comparison and then invoke the highlighting server for us, and then we can see what's there. So let me reduce this just a hair so we can see what's going on. And we can see that this was changed to Ben Mitchell and changed from Sarah Smithies. And we can follow that bouncing ball through the entire PowerPoint. Oftentimes, this is, this is a method that folks would love to do, but they can't do because software just doesn't do it, ours does. If you do like the PowerPoint comparison, we have that available as well, all within the same interface. So you don't have to go and compare PowerPoint from PowerPoint, Excel from Excel, our one interface is a one-stop shop for all of your comparison needs. So I have PowerPoint selected. I click on view. It's now going to open this up in native PowerPoint for us to be able to deal with it. So I have my ability to see what's changed and I can accept or reject these changes uh, right here on the fly and then save my new version of this PowerPoint as an example. Hopefully this is making sense to everyone on the phone. We will have plenty of time for Q&A. I only have a little bit left for the, um, for the demonstration. I want to focus now on a new capability we have, and that is the ability to compare snippets of text from your clipboard regardless of how you get them there. So what I've, what I've found is that more and more attorneys, especially the, um, the younger group are using email as Word documents. And I'm sure that you run into that all the time where they put uh, essentially, you know, it's a 10, essentially a 10 page document in the body text of an email. Um, not really the best place for it, but it happens. So we need to be able to deal with that as well. So let's say that we're in a Word document and I want to compare just some selected text. So I'm going to select just a piece of text here. And I'm going to right click. And from Word, I have a compare selected text option. What this will do for us, take that selected text, convert it to a Word document, and plug it into the compare docs interface. But now, what if I have 
something from either the web, uh, I went to Westlaw and got a clause, or my new precedents. Well, let's just say somebody emailed me an updated version of that clause, and here it is. I can select this text from here, right click, copy. As you see, I don't have a compare selected text here, because it's not integrated with email, but my, my clipboard is. I just navigate back to my compare docs interface and I can either put my cursor in there and do a control V or here on our open, I can now select clipboard and same thing will apply. Take what's in my clipboard, convert that to a word document. And now I want to go ahead and I can make it track changes if I want to continue editing or I could just get a simple red line and let's take a look at that. So I took a piece of text from word, piece of text from outlook, or anywhere you have access to the clipboard, and I can compare them. And here is our comparison for us. At this point, that concludes the demonstration. We do have um, at least 10 minutes for Q&A. And I'm happy to run through any of other scenarios uh, that may come up on the live chat. So uh, Ashley, uh, back to you. All right, thank you so much, Dennis. We're going to go ahead and open up to Q&A now. And our first question is, um, does this program have to be placed on the individual computer? For example, if working from home on a laptop, how would this comparison product work? Um, if it does not need to be placed on individual computers, how is it charged the number of users in the company? Can you elaborate? Great question. So um, actually, if you wouldn't mind switching back to me, because that uh, is actually one thing that I did want to show. Oh, yes, that, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> is that we do have both um, uh, compare docs comes in two flavors. There's compare docs desktop and there's compare docs cloud. Um, so let's take a look and, and I'll show you the difference. Um, so let's say that you're moving to or or you have um, let's say net docs or I manage web. I can select two documents here on my iPad, so this is on my iPad. I don't need to have any in software installed locally. Once I have it selected, you see now that I've enumerated this compare with compare docs icon. I simply click on this. This works well with Macs as well that don't have Windows software loaded. I have this in verbose mode. So if you have a compare docs desktop loaded, it will ask you, do you want to open up the desktop app? Or do you want to open up the web app? If you were just on an iPad, it wouldn't even ask you because it knows that you only have access to the web app. So I click on web app, and it's going to upload those two documents to the web. We have this running as a service in Microsoft Azure. So I'll just go ahead and log into this briefly. Hopefully it won't take too long here. And of course, Microsoft wants to send me a code for do dual factor authentication, which I'm going to plug in here in a moment. This is Al. Uh, I just wanted to also note that, you know, we're fully Office 365 integrated. So if you're working from home via Office 365, you bring your copy of Compare Docs with you automatically that way as well. Correct, Dennis? Yeah, so I was going to show the both. I'm going to show, you know, kind of the comparing from from the web UI. So then we're we're uploading these documents to our to our cloud instance. From a from a security standpoint, it's only point in time transit. It's encrypted at rest and in motion. Once the compare is done, it's flushed from the system. Uh, so no worries there from a from a security liability standpoint. I run my comparison. Then we'll get a number of output options uh, for us to be able to work with. And the primary one, if you're working on a, uh, an iPad, would be just go ahead and open it up in the browser. And now we're going to see this, com this red line comparison ready for us in the browser. And now we see that red line in the browser. 
What Al was also talking about is that if you're using Office 365 um, from, from the Microsoft Store, <clears throat> we have um, we have an add-in. All right, so I, uh, I have my Compare Docs Cloud add-in ready for me to use, and I can select my documents and bring them back into my version of Word that I have. And again, I'd have to log into my account in order for you to see this. But to, uh, to suffice to answer the question, yes, we we can handle uh, comparisons from a cloud perspective. Let's go ahead and close that down. Hopefully that answers the question. Any other questions? Yep. Well, let's see what we've got here next. Um, so, how is ComparDocs more accurate than Microsoft Word? Yeah. So, um, good question. And you would think that Microsoft Word would be more accurate than a third-party tool, but um, it's the way in which they're doing the comparison is that they actually need to have the Word document open to do the comparison. We don't, so we do it at the binary level. So there are certain things within the documents that actually get locked, um, even within the body of the document when you have it open. And therein lies some of the differences between our comparison and that of Word or others for that matter. So Word doesn't do things like uh, other competitors do with converting it to other file formats, but it does need to have that file format and that Word uh, application loaded to do the comparison, we do not. So we're doing it at a binary level, so ones and zeros are changed. That's all we're that's all we're doing, and then we render it back within word track changes or redline. Okay, so um, just some clarification. Um, we have a question here, kind of uh, again about the. Um, pricing for the product, so is it per license or per person? Is what uh, this, is, this is Al. Uh, in case of the desktop product, it's really licensed per copy, uh, which would be per workstation. But it's very, you know, it's the sliding scale based on volume is built in to adjust for that. Um, if you're, again, if you're going to license under Office 365, that gives you the portability aspect, but it's is licensed If you have a large uh, amount of people that will be using it, then uh, let's talk and uh, we have uh, different types of licensing structures for bulk purchases. Okay, awesome. Um, let's see, we've got one more question here. Can you compare image only PDFs and how does that work? Uh, yes. Yes, we can compare image only PDFs. And it works by OCRing that image only PDF at time of comparison. Perfect. And the OCR is handled by ComparDocs. You don't have to have your own OCR product on your desktop. That is correct. Yes, yeah, so ComparDocs comes with a uh, feature rich OCR capability built into it that handles a number of functions. You saw earlier where I took a PDF that did have a text layer. And converted it to Word. That's one thing that that engine does. The other thing that that engine does is can take an image-only PDF and convert that to a text-layered PDF. Okay, great. Uh, this, this is Al. I just want to add one other thing. We use the Abbey OCR engine, which is maybe the Cadillac of all OCR products out there, as our background product. It has the capability to work in multiple languages. So if your firm is dealing with, uh, uh, let's say, documents that may be in Spanish or in Chinese or something else, we can work with that as well. Just, just want to make sure I put that point out there. A lot of California firms are internationally uh, working these days, and that's that's an issue that some do bring up. Oh, that's a very powerful feature. Yeah, very, very good to know. Thank you. Let's see here. I don't think we have any more questions at this time. 
So we're going to go ahead and move on. And for anyone who might have some questions later, feel free to email us at info at whamsinc.com. That's I-N-F-O at W-A-M-S-I-N-C.com. And whether it's something we can answer or something that we need to forward to DocsCorp, we will be sure to get you the appropriate answer on that. Now, if this was helpful, but you'd like to dive a little bit deeper, or if you need some tr training and education on other applications, WAMS can help. Kathleen provides trainings both remotely or in-house. These can be group trainings or one-on-one. -on -one. We offer total customization to whatever you need. Um, this can be on general software, legal software, um, custom macro packages, Microsoft Office, document management systems, and security training. And um, again, you can email info at whamsinc.com to learn more. If anyone else is curious about what else WAMS can do to make your IT solution the best it can be, we offer managed services, cloud services, projects and consulting, security auditing and implementation, disaster recovery, and of course, training. We can be reached at 800-421-7151, and you can learn more at whamsinc.com. So I just want to thank Alan and Dennis again for being here today, and thank you all for joining us today. Um, stay tuned. Our next broadcast will be on July 31st at 10 a.m., and we will be looking at what's new in Mimecast, so go ahead and keep an eye out for that invite.